our papers on the impact of climate change on breast production in Thailand. And here's the outline of the presentation. So in our paper, we combine four different models from several disciplines to get at the effect of climate change. So first, I'll introduce our economic model, where um, rice yields are output of farmers' input decision making. Then John will talk about a different model that can also be used to predict rice yields, but which does so from purely biophysical perspective. Then we'll talk about possible climate change scenarios and how we go about uh, simulating them and how we integrate the four different models, and then we'll go to results and conclusion. So we take a multi-stage approach to modeling rice production, and in general, there are several reasons why a single-stage production function is ill-suited for modeling crop cultivation. One, uh, for any given physical input, depending on when it's applied during crop cultivation, it will have a different effect on the final yield. So inputs into crop cultivation are characterized not only by their physical qualities, but also by the timing of the application. Also, farmers may adjust or change their input choices depending on the progress of crop development up to that point. And the progress of crop development in turn depends partly on the realization of production shocks earlier in the crop cultivation process. So in other words, farmers' input decisions later in crop cultivation process are made in response to production shocks realized early in the process. So this gives rise to endogeneity. And also, production shocks realized earlier in the cultivation process update farmers' information set and so update his expectations of future production shocks later in the stage. Where are these production functions used? Who uses them? What kind of models? Agriculture? Agricultural research, or who uses this kind of production function? Who uses production functions for rice? Production functions are used not only for rice, but different kinds of crops. And they're used both by economists to model farmers' decisions and see like, how changes in farmers' circumstances affect the yields and stuff. They're also used okay. by economists who focus more on like Agro-sciences. So it's essentially an approximation of what the farmer would do, right? Yes. Okay. And it's one way of approximating. Like you'll okay. see, this satellite is another way of modeling. Okay. So our way is looking at it from economic perspective. Okay. So to construct a multi-stage production for rice growth, we need to map growth phases of rice plants' biological development into production stages and the corresponding operations that the farmer performs. So we identify three stages, three growth phases, which are roughly uh, planting, plant growth, and harvesting. And as you can see, within each stage, several operations are performed by farmers simultaneously. And uh, uh, for each of these three production stages, we can think of them as a separate production subprocess with its own production function. And the inputs into that product stage specific production function are uh, in, like labor, non labor inputs used in that stage, production shocks that will be realized during that stage, and also intermediate output from the previous stage, which measures the progress of rice. Growth. And for stage one, Y0 will be initial conditions such as soil quality and plot characteristics and so on. And then if we substitute in recursively for the intermediate output levels, we'll get a composite production function which describes final yield as a function of inputs and shocks throughout the all three production stages and initial conditions. What, what's the form of uh, I mean, is it the cut Yeah, it is the cut And why is uh, the shocks exponential? Is that standard with modeling to have shocks? For Cold Douglas, it's like it's standard for standard separate. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because when you take the logs, the log of the spinner will just blast the production. Okay, okay. But yeah, cop diamond is just one of them. I'm just and um, we assume that farmers maximize expected profits at the beginning of each stage I, which is when they make the input decision. And um, if we look at the first order condition for intermediate input, in this case it's intermediate labor, we see that it's marginal cost and so it's marginal product has two components. One is the current component, which is just current price of the input. And another is the future component, which reflects changes of farmers' adjustments of input levels in future stages in response to the changes in crop growth development due to changes in levels of current inputs used. And we estimate our model as a system of simultaneous equations, which includes composite production function, which is again yield as a function of all inputs throughout all stages, and our system also includes uh, equations for input decision rules at each stage. And in our estimation, we use stage and operation-specific input prices as instruments. And why can we do that is uh, in Thailand, there's a lot of regional migration going on, in particular of uh, circular or seasonal type, and it goes both rural, 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 urban ways, and in each case it goes either direction. So because of that, labor markets are determined not on like village level, but on a much larger regional level. And we also use farmer-specific rainfall expectations. So what do I mean by farmer? Well, they are too plot specific. It means that we take into account when we construct rainfall expectation the fact that farmers at different plots perform the same operation during different times. For example, some farmer may start planting in May, another farmer may start planting in June, and so on. So, because of this differences in timing of operation. Although rainfall is an aggregate shock at, say, village level, farmers' expectations of that aggregate shock will be different. And we use um, unbalanced five-year panel. So it, five year means five rice growing cycles, which kind of spill into the January of the following calendar year. Uh, for 137 households in, in the Thai village, uh, sorry, Thailand province of Sisakit, which is in northeastern part of the country, it's predominantly rural and relatively poor. 